Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting to order. We have the pledge by Councilman David Broussard and the prayer by Mayor Pro Tem Ricky Gonsal. Everybody bow their heads, please. Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us engage in meaningful discussion. Allow us to grow closer as a group and nurture our bonds of our community. We, we, pray, we pray for the people of the Ukraine and other countries during these trying times. Amen. Amen. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mayor Pro Tem Ricky Gonsolin. Present. Councilmember Brooke Morcott. Here. Councilmember Moreland Lewis. Here. Councilmember David Broussard. Here. Councilmember Deidre Ledbetter. Here. Councilmember Dee Dee Johnson Reed. Here. Councilmember Dustin Swear. Here. Thank you. Our first item is public comment. I'll ask you to please silence your cell phones and please remember there's no back and forth. We just listen to your comments. Madam Clerk. Dr. Tina Stefanski in, let's see, for agenda item number 7B. Good evening. Just a few things that, um, again, as you consider this ordinance over the next couple of weeks. Exposure to secondhand smoke, I think a lot of us think um, or are pretty intuitively aware. So a non-smoker non who's exposed to secondhand smoke, certainly that can contribute or exacerbate pulmonary issues like asthma, COPD. But what is also now better understood is that exposure, um, even small amounts to secondhand smoke, can also contribute to heart disease. Um, it has been definitively linked to heart attacks and strokes. So that, that's, I think, very compelling, um, compelling evidence and, and, you know, there's study after study that's showing these links, again, not only to these pulmonary issues, but also to really lifelong, um, lifelong diseases that have, uh, you know, morbidity and mortality associated with them. Um, another point, you know, that I would ask you all to consider um, is, um, again, evidence that uh, levels of secondhand smoke in restaurants and bars were found to be two to five times higher than in households with smokers. So again, if you consider people who work in these environments who are non-smokers themselves, you know, trying to support themselves and their families, um, who are continually exposed to this, this secondhand smoke, um, the effect that that smoke has, on, again, on their own personal health, their longevity, um, and, and again, that of, of their ability to, to care for and be around to support, uh, to support their family. So again, I applaud you, and I think it's wonderful that you all um, are going to consider this ordinance over the next couple of weeks. And just offer, if y'all got any questions, I'm happy to meet and talk with y'all at, at any point or any of your constituents. Um, my email address is, uh, is is pretty easy. It's tina.stefanski at la.gov, and I just invite y'all to email me, and I'll be happy to review any of this in more detail. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Renee Sansbury for agenda item number 7B. Thank you, council members and mayor, for having me here tonight. Um, it's Dr. Stefanski, you know, she's a medical director of Office of Public Health. Um, so I'm very excited that she and our other supporters were able to come here tonight to share their thoughts with you. Um, in healthier air for all gives all workers a safe environment to work in and all workers have the right to breathe clean air wouldn't you agree that our musicians do a lot for our community they bring tourists to our area to hear our one-of-a-kind music and if there's a disaster or if someone's sick or we need to raise funds we're always reaching out to our musicians well we ask them to help us with our families and the community but when is it our time to help support and protect them um, you may be saying others donate their time too, like doctors, lawyers, dentists, and they do. But they all have the opportunity to work and breathe clean air at work, but our musicians do not, or our DJs, or our bartenders, or our wait staff. They're all affected, wait, sorry. 
<laughs> are they not affected the same right to breathe clean air at work? Many of our musicians don't have insurance in workplaces like we all do, so then it makes it that much harder for them when they do become sick with any type of respiratory infection. According to the Surgeon General's report, musicians and those who work in these types of facilities are exposed to 300 to 600 percent more secondhand smoke than all of us do because of their work environment. I think we all know that it's an involuntary choice for them, meaning that it, they're just breathing someone else's secondhand smoke. It's not done by choice. It's, their, it's not their choice to breathe in that secondhand smoke. This is an issue of public health, and our leaders are elected to protect the health and welfare of those they serve. Ooh, I forgot my cards. <laughs> I'll have to show you. Um, Michelle, if you could. So over the past couple of uh, years working in the parish, we um, had support cards. So we had the community vote whenever we were out at events. These are some of the support cards. We have over 500 cards that we've collected from community members. And I know Dustin likes to look at both sides, so we do have our no's. <laughs> As you can see, the no's are very much different than our yeses for a smoke-free community for those that um, uh, were, get to vote and give their opinion on having a smoke-free community. These cards represent all that come to your community, both visitors and those who live here, that were able to give their opinion. I stand before you here today and ask you to do the right thing. I ask you to give them the same protection that we all get to enjoy each day and create a healthier air for all, for all of our patrons, our workers, and our musicians. You'll hear from a few supporters here tonight, and I just ask you to listen attentively to what they're trying to share with you. I believe it's the right time to do the right thing with the right counsel, and I'm here to just offer support to you and answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Michelle Mesh for agenda item number 7B. Any more? I'm not going to speak. I'm just here to support. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Randy Gospa for agenda item number 7B. Fred. Hi, everyone. Hey, man. Thank you for allowing me to speak today. Um, I'm here to just share a few thoughts on um, why I would ask that you at least consider uh, prohibiting smoking in um, public places. Uh, namely, for me, it would be bars, restaurants, uh, of the like, because I play in a band, and we play uh, uh, three or four times a week and for all 52 weekends, so we're, we're in those, that, that environment quite a bit. And, uh, you know, when, when I go to uh, a place that allows smoking as opposed to a place that does not, uh, I tend to see more people coming out in those non-smoking venues. And, of course, in those venues, the, the smokers have to go outside if, you know, if they don't allow the smoke, and they still, they still come and enjoy it, but the smokers go enjoy it outside. But no matter what, um, even if, it's not, if, if the venue's in a certain place where they're not far enough away, you still get the residual value of the smoke. You got the smell, you got the intake. Um, and, you know, me being a non-smoker, um, it, it's hard to play music, try to sing, and try to breathe if, if when we're in that environment. So I'd ask that you at least consider prohibiting smoking in the places, uh, public places. But I brought some stuff from the CDC and it goes pretty quick, but um, <clears throat> I just want to remind you that exposure to secondhand smoke causes disease and premature death. And even a brief exposure can cause immediate harm. Um, it, it, um, it hurts the workers, it hurts the bands, and it hurts the, the patrons all, all at the same time. So. Um, Thank you for letting me speak tonight, and, and just please consider uh, non-smoking venues in this environment. Thank you. Thank you. Sean Falk for agenda item number 7B. Hey, y'all. Thank you all for having me. Uh, my name is Sean Falk. I'm a musician and a member of the cast in Jet 7 band, and I know many People do not equate performing in bars 
as a workplace, uh, but that's part of my living from that standpoint. Let me give you a little bit of, of uh, my experience. I've been doing this for 40 years. I've been playing music for 40 years, all over the country, toured, etc. Now I'm with Randy, just kind of explained a little bit about his, his position, but <clears throat> I play a lot in, um, you know, cafes and bars and concerts, etc. all that stuff. My process is to explain to you what it affects on my vocal cords, my, um, the process of what my, you know, the, my kind of living, etc., and the smell, etc., all that stuff. Um, I have problems whenever, um, after I'm playing in a club or something of that nature, whenever it's um, uh, smoking and et cetera, all that stuff, it's very difficult to sing. Um, it's very difficult to perform. Um, I do not condone anyone who smokes at all. Um, but I'm, I'm looking to try to get an environment where I can really enjoy what I do. Um, I've played, you know, casinos, etc., all that stuff. I've done major concerts. But my purpose here is to kind of mention a little bit about the local area here. Um, I really enjoy New Iberia. I really enjoy playing here. I really uh, have a good time whenever I do it. It looks like um, it's a much better environment once the, there's no smoking, etc., all that stuff. I could sing better. I could play better. I enjoy myself better. So my purpose here is just to kind of give you a little bit of uh, an idea of what, what a musician goes through. Um, for 40 years of experience and what I've passed through in the, in the past whenever bars had um, smoking constantly and, and the vocal ability, you know, so it's getting better, but, but I just wish you guys would you know, consider that. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. David Merrill for agenda item number 7B. Good evening. Good evening, and I'd like to thank you guys for allowing me to come. Um, I was a former councilman myself, and I was here when Ms. Renee started this program years ago. I also was there when she asked me to participate with her when I really thought the information that she came up with was real good information. And when I saw New Orleans and a lot of other areas decided to go the same way. And they have a lot more, you know, entertainment and things like that, casinos and everything that we do. But... Uh, I really fell on board with it. And when Mr. Dahl was alive, we put together a program at his club. I was there that night. And a lot of those cards she's telling you guys about, a lot of people signed those cards. And Mr. Dahl himself was, you know, definitely on board with us, what we want to do. I have no problem with the owners that have differences about people smoking in their places. But one thing about it, I really look at the things that we're going through today with the the different, you know, environment we have with all of these different sicknesses and everything like that. I think it would be better for us to look into trying to look at better our situations here in our local area, especially with our people and our young people. We have a lot of things going on across the country where they're talking about mass situations in schools and different things like that. Smoking does not help situations dealing with COVID. I'm pretty sure all of you guys know that. I used to be a smoker myself. I stopped smoking 20-something years ago. And one thing I know about stop smoking, it made a big difference in my life. And I have no problem with people smoking, but when you look at going in a restaurant and sit down eating food, how can you really sit down and eat the food and taste what you're eating and feel good about the, the, the area you're in and the environment if there's smoke's coming both ways from you? You know, and I just think that's something we ought to look at for our environment and the people that we're here with. And uh, whatever I can do to help her situation, I'm going to do it. And I thank you guys for listening to me, and you guys have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. That's it? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Madam Clerk, Adam Tuway. Acceptance of the minutes of February 15th, 2022, which will publish on March 2nd, 2022. Do you have a motion? Motion. 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 That was a quick one. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to do Councilman, Councilwoman Brooke Marcotte and Councilman uh, Marlon Lewis. He's getting quicker. I'm trying to be ready. Hey, I'm trying. Is there any discussion on our minutes from February 15th? Hearing and seeing none, please vote your machines.
Thank you. Item three, A. Paul and David Allis to present concept drawings for the Pepperplex Renovations Project. Um, so good evening. Good evening. Um, David is the uh, project architect for this project, and um, he and Freddie have spent a lot of time discussing the scope of the work and the details of the project. So I'm going to let David go over those details, and um, if you have any questions, I'll be behind him. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, first off, right behind y'all, we have our concept development for the new Pepperplex renovations. Um, and then what I'll do is go through each of the different items so we can look at it in depth. Um, starting with number A, and I have a pointer. Let's see if it will work. Right. Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> starting with number A, uh, letter A. We are going to be uh, doing an artificial turfing of the infield of the existing baseball field. So that's six fields total. Uh, this is a high quality performing uh, surface that is also very low maintenance over the long run. It is a little more expensive than just grass, but again, maintenance wise, much more affordable. Um, and then on item B, we're going to be adding a new concession stand. That's going to be on the left side, the left cluster. Uh, which will also house restrooms, uh, any other support spaces would need for that uh, concession stand, as well as ample seating and uh, shade for covered any, seat. yes, covered seating, shade, you know, get out of the elements type of space for all the patrons. Um, and actually, the, the side, the cluster on the right has an existing concession stand and a shade structure, so this is sort of just complementary the other half of the park that does not have anything like that right now. Um, then there's an existing number C, there's, uh, sorry, item C. There's an existing uh, set of offices, sort of a portable building system. We're going to look at creating something a, a bit stronger and new and sound for uh, the new facilities manager. Uh, we'll be doing for item D, um, looking at as a possible alternate uh, to do some additional shade structures on the right cluster of fields as well. Um, then item E, we're going to do some batting cage upgrades. They look like they've been hit by a few hurricanes. I'm not sure <laughs> if the lighting is performing right and the netting probably is dry rotted. So we're going to evaluate that and see what we can do to, to improve those. Um, item F, additional lighting. So on the largest ball field on the bottom uh, left side, there currently is no lighting, so it makes it a lot more difficult for them to be able to utilize the field. Uh, fortunately, there's an existing pole we can use, and then we'll have to add a new pole on the other side of the field, so that will help to cover the requirements for that, and we'll get the lighting requirements out of that one. Um, and then on, and all the other fields have the appropriate lighting on the baseball side. Now, on the soccer fields, only two fields are illuminated completely, and so what we'll be doing is, again, tagging <coughs> on to some existing poles, add some lights, and then on the other side of the field, we'll put some new light sets with poles, and that will provide now three fields that are illuminated um, for, and that will be the first three fields off of Sucrose Drive. Uh, we'll have some improvements to the soccer fields, just various upgrades just to help with the actual um, surfacing, make sure the drainage is appropriate, and things like that. Um, a bigger improvement that we're going to have for item number H is the sidewalk. So currently there's limited sidewalk access. It's very just bare minimum. Um, and this is just going to expand upon that so that people aren't trekking through dirt, mud, you know, through the grass. It just kind of helps to provide more wheelchair accessible and friendly strollers, you know, you name it. Um, that will also extend along the soccer fields to have better access through there as well and get right off of the parking so everyone can um, exit their vehicles and kind of almost immediately be on a pathway. Um, item, and then with the parking for item number I, we're going to look at the parking lot, see what kind of upgrades we could do. It's probably still going to remain gravel, but it could use some TLC. Uh, and potentially, if, we, if the, the funds allow, we'll maybe look at doing some retainment to keep the gravel contained and not just spilling out everywhere. 
Um, we'll, we'll have the opportunity for item J to take care of some roadside signage to help people off of Highway 14 know where the Pepperplex is, and as well as when they enter the facility to help with that, um, and also some gates so you can, we, they can close off the main entrance uh, off of Sucrose so that they can keep that safe during off hours. Um, throughout the site, there is some various uh, drainage issues that need to be addressed and we're going to address those as well. Um, and just some miscellaneous park signage throughout, help direct people and uh, budget permits. We'll throw some landscaping in just to dress it out and make it a little bit more appealing. So um, from a timeline, these are just the items that we looked at from the scope. We're going to be engaging these further when we get our consultants involved, engineers, surveyors, things like that, just to kind of really iron out what the full scope is. But each one of these but items has a budget, so we're going to try to work and keep in those budgets so that we don't one doesn't push over into another. Um, and currently, we're looking at about two months for construction documents, and then we'll be able to put it out to bidding, which will take a month, and then about uh, another two weeks just to sort of finalize the contract, get it to you guys to see to review the bids, and then hopefully by early July, boots on the ground, construction starts. So, um, one important thing is that the, the facility is in use. So we want to make sure that we establish appropriate timelines of when things need to be completed and when things uh, need to not interfere with seasons because they have fall season, they have spring season. And so we just want to make sure that we keep that uh, coordinated with the contractors. And some things are just unfortunately, you're going to have to build it and it's just going to take a while to build, like the concessions and things. But it doesn't really interfere with the fields as much. So, you know, appropriate actions will be taken to make sure uh, visitors don't stumble onto the construction site. Like any project we do, there's always care taken for that safety. So do y'all have any questions? Questions, comments? So are we uh, only? Go ahead, Didi. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were looking at me. Uh, it's okay, go, go, it's fine. <laughs> we're all gonna get a chance. Um, so we're only gonna have one concessions area? There'll be two concession areas on the, in the whole complex, mm -hmm. but one per field cluster. So you have one on the left side, which will be the new one, and that's the T-ball fields and then the three larger fields. Right. Then on the right side, there's an existing concession stand that's utilized now, and that's what the soccer fields use and okay. the other three baseball fields. So you have two total. Okay. Okay. And, and restrooms. This is the, the new one's going to have uh, a full bank of restrooms as well, so a much needed upgrade too. It's quite a distance between the two clusters, so it's a far mm -hmm. walk. So right. this will help to kind of keep them uh, the amenities for them. Okay, that's why I was wondering because yeah, yeah, want to make it's sure walk. they're not walking all the way over there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dustin. You had your hand up. Thank you. Uh, the right of way. Councilman's weird. I'm sorry. Appreciate that, Freddie. <laughs> uh, the right of way that runs on the other side of the soccer field. Before you enter, coming down, before you enter the parking, yeah, is that going to be? Because right now you can access. So you mentioned about the gates, putting the gates up at, on su the entrance at Sucrose. Yeah, how are we going to stop traffic from coming in? Is that is that something we're going to be able to do as far as restricting? Because like I'm, what I'm worried about is like in the evenings or something, someone sure. wants to be a fool and come on a ATV right. or a truck. Right. Um, we can evaluate that with the property to see where exactly yeah. is the city's property and what's the right-of-way component. And, and if that means an, another gate system, you know, something to help prevent that. But we, we are beginning to be aware that that is a parking area. I've been talking with several people, and they're like, oh, we go park over there. I'm like, well, that's not even the parking lot. Yeah. But it seems like that's kind of been taken over as a parking. So right. we do want to address that. Okay. And before I go any Brother, um, I see Scott back there, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Scott Barringer. I want to thank him for the many years that you've put in and uh, the hard work that you've done. Definitely. And I'm looking forward to seeing this come to fruition, but I didn't want to leave him out back there because he did a great job for so many years. So thank Agreed. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so are we prioritizing what we do first, like I guess drainage would come first? Or yeah, drainage and the resurfacing, is that how it works? Well, we sort of give all the tasks to the contractor that, okay. for them to decide, and then 
they will establish like certain periods, like when we do school projects, we have certain periods where work can happen and can't happen. And we just have to establish that to them okay. and make sure they're aware of it. And a lot of it depends on, you know, a field might take time, lead time to order it, to have it manufactured. And same thing with metal buildings, you know, they take months to just to get them before you see the steel on the site. So they'll do things they can do, but you know, dirt work typically is some of the first things that will happen, okay. yeah. And I'm asking because um, I know it can be done in stages, like that's what Crowley's actually doing too. Um, as long as we have our drainage under control and lay the turf, if it starts running a little longer than necessary because of our weather around here, mm -hmm. uh, we could probably still start hosting for fall ball, possibly. Possibly, yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. That would be good. Um, and then we could worry about maybe the concession and stuff after that because we do already have a concession stand. Right, right. But I guess we'd have to talk to the contractor. Yeah, yeah you're going to end up with a general contractor. That's the world I live in. That's where I okay. come from. And the general contractor, you're going to give him some drop-dead dates of what you want to happen. Right. But he's going to look at the total approach globally. He's going to order his metal building right when he gets the job because he doesn't want the prices to go up and okay. production takes a long time. He's going to give it to turf people and get that ordered as quick as he can. Yeah. But he's going to assess the situation and then figure out, well, what can I do that I'm not disturbing anybody? Right. So there might be some sidewalks. There might be some areas of drainage. But the GC, because they state the time, we're doing a little different that we're going to give them some drop-dead dates. But they're going to look at the project as, as a total. You can't go and micromanage too, too much because uh, then your price just goes up. But we'll give them some drop-dead dates of we need this by this time, that by that time, but you're going to see some flux, and then you don't know what's going to happen. I mean, we're in an inflationary period. We still have all kind of uh, delivery issues. So, you know, they're going to want to work. They get paid per percentage of completion. So they want to make their money. Their percentage is based on percentage of completion of the whole job. So you're going to pay for the metal building early, uh, and he'll cash in on his little part of that. You're going to order other things, and subs are going to be in and out. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, you know, it's the normal way to do a project. Okay, gotcha. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Cool. Anybody else? Mr. Broussard. It's a Pepper Plexus in District 3. A lot of years, the board members, all the board members asked me to help, do some help, fix the parking lot. Simple as that. We couldn't do it more lighting, some more this and some more that. I'm so glad, Mr. Mayor, that yourself has come up with this great idea and this council followed you on it, that it's getting done because it's been a big problem. I mean, they didn't know where to turn. And I think it's going to help our city a lot for bringing in baseball teams and all that into our hotels, motels. And so I'm so proud it's in District 3. And I'm so glad that we can help the board. It's a lot, of, it's a lot on that board <coughs> to maintain a big place like this. And I'm surprised that you're getting this accomplished. I'm surprised. <laughs> okay. You know, for so many years it's been stagnant, and it came up with this money that we had on the side that you're using. And we appreciate it, Mr. Mayor, and this council. And Ms. Marcotte, you know, you brought it up as an idea. But, uh, boy, it's going to help them a lot. Thank you, Mr. Broussard. And just, you know, we put it in the master study with the last term. Didn't know how we would do it. Not, I sat up here with you before, not that we didn't want to do it. We just didn't have a way to do it. Right. And then when we discovered uh, that 1950 legislation that let us do an economic development zone, which we had never done uh, an economic development zone before as a city. So we went through a lot of hurdles and steps and had a whole lot of help from Jason Akers to figure out how to do it and pull it off. So it has a funding source. But until we could find a funding source, it wasn't that anyone who sat up here last term or when Mr. Bruce Ard and I served before didn't want to do it. We just didn't have a dedicated way to do it. Uh, but that's what's allowing us to borrow the $3 million. Um, um, we met with every agency that plays out there, every group, and said, okay, give me the list, and came up with the list of the necessities. And this is, you know, it's a nice project, but it's the necessities. It's still not a complete thing. It's still going to need more down the road. But this was what we could do to attract, to keep our little league here, to attract some travel ball, <coughs> to uplift the quality of play for soccer, for everything. So this was the minimum and it's $3 million, but at least we have a funding source and then a way to maintain it and a way to fund our new director and fund a person to keep it up. And 
So you'll see it coming, but it is a work in progress. But and I can't thank all of y'all enough because y'all didn't have to go on the rod for the EDD. And, you know, I mean, we all work together as we always do to pull this off. So it's a good thing. Anybody else? Yes, sir. So David, just, just being the devil's advocate, I think, and I did mention this to Freddie, that, you know, first impressions, everything on this thing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, when, when you can open the gates, we want to make sure that, you know, it's a, it's a wow factor. Mm -hmm. So are you prepared to, you know, if, if it goes over budget, you got some ideas where we can squeeze back? And, oh, absolutely. Okay. So Being that it's broken into a shopping list, that right. just kind of helps to lend to that. Jimmy, but, you got a great plan. Yeah, no, we have priorities. There's things you, yeah. you we need to do to make that wow factor. You know, turf in the fields is probably one of the most important things on the long run. And that concession stand. So, you know, you start to get that list of, mm -hmm. of items. There's things that you could, you could pull back on and right. there's flexibility with. So it makes it easy when it's a site development more than, a, say, just a building right. development. So, yeah. You know, when you, have, when you have projects like this that are undercapitalized and you don't complete them and you do them halfway, it I'm just doing it doesn't, doesn't look good down the road. No, no. And, and so, but we, I know. we got some good budget numbers to start with, and good. that helps. And we broke it into all these categories. Right. And from the time I set the budget yeah. up, I set it per each item because that's how you, when you can do that, that's how you can extra have an extra layer of control. Mm -hmm. And we have a little contingency. We have about a two hundred fifty thousand dollar contingency because, and look, this is going to happen on every project we do, and the ones we finish in, the ones we start in, and we have almost forty something million dollars to spend. Uh, between the times we end, every project is going to be uh, an animal to manage. That's just the world we live in right now. But we do have a little contingency. We did look at our budget numbers hard, and, you know, I, I don't want this to be half. No, no. Uh, right. Half. Anyway. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Half of anything. Yeah, I almost said something I should. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. Feels like we're riding with Biden and we're building back better. Because this was something that was kind of like infrastructurally torn from years ago and we coming back and making it better but it also was a cry, it was a cry from our community mm -hmm. that said we need something for our kids Definitely. and I do I do want to thank the board members the past board members the present board members that stuck stuck to this oh, yeah. you know they had some stick to it in this I also want to thank uh, Brooke and Dustin as well being baseball kind of people you know that really pushed but we got to remember this was a cry from our kids from our community to do something in our community that keep our kids there so that they can be proud of. You know, I passed through Youngsville last night picking my daughter up from her girlfriend's house to live there. And, man, I saw they got the big, beautiful roundabout right before the, the deal. So, you know, we got some motivation going on, but New Iberia is still leading the pack. We got 28,000 people. We got the kids. We just have to have the place for them to play. And, you know, I appreciate uh, what we've done as a con. You know, like I always said in the past, we were the council of yes. Mm -hmm. Team players making things happen. Yep. And this is one of those things where a yes went a long way. So, uh, Agreed. and thanks for your innovation and stuff like that. But we, we, we're getting it done, man. Thank we're you. We're getting Thank it done. You. We got the right people working yeah. on it. Thank you. Definitely. Anybody else? Everybody? We're good? Mm -hmm. Cool. And I also want to thank, you know, look. They were so far ahead of the game. Youngsville and Broussard had nothing but cane field when this was started. The state ended up taking their funding or we'd have been there. I mean, they really, you know, people had vision who served on those boards and who, and then to stick to it when you're out of money, you know, and to stick to it and not give up and keep cutting grass and keep, you know, doing things, it, it, it says a lot. Um, but again, it's for our kids. So uh, that's why they did it and that's why we're doing this. Great. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank Madam Clerk, for it. Public hearing. Public hearing on special ordinance number 2021-2022-05, amending the budget to reflect changes in grant funding and various projects for the city of New Iberia. I need a motion to open our public hearing. Motion. Motion by Councilwoman Dee Johnson-Reed and a second by Mayor Pro Tem Ricky Gonsolin. Is there any public comment on this item? Hearing and seeing none, I need a motion to close. Motion. Second. Councilwoman Brooke Marcotte and Mayor Pro Tem Ricky Gonsolin. Thank you. 5A. Special ordinance number, special ordinance number 2021-2022-05, amending the budget to reflect changes in grant funding and various projects for the city of New Iberia. I need a motion. Move. Second. second. Motion by Mayor Pro Tem Ricky and I'm going to give this second to Councilman Dustin Swear. Is there any discussion on this item? Hearing and seeing none, I'd ask you to please vote your machines. 
Thank you all very much. All right, 6A. Resolution 22-29, appointing Anthony Antoine to serve on the New Iberia Housing Authority. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion by second. Uh, Councilman Marlon Lewis and a second by uh, Councilwoman Ledbetter. Thank you. Uh, is there any discussion? And our Person appointee here? is here. Yes, our appointee is here. Uh, that he is. Thank you, man. I got a comment, that's, man. Yeah, I just, sure. man, I saw my friend. I didn't know what he was here for, but I've worked with him with the Buddies program and several other things. Great guy. Couldn't <laughs> have a better person to serve our community, man. That's why I rushed for the motion. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Any other comment? No, I think he'll be great on the board. Thank you for being willing to serve. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, man. And I see all the work you do with Reverend Sophus and the church, and uh, you can't say you're not a community guy, so I really appreciate that. Cool. Well, then, if there's no other discussion, please uh, vote your machines. Appreciate it. And I have to say, our new little system of having the people come is nice. You get to put a face with the name. You get to see somebody you know. It, it, it just makes it good. Yeah. Don't know why we didn't do that before. So. <laughs> we got complacent. I guess so, but we're doing it now. Yeah. Uh, 6B. Resolution 22-30, reappointing Craig Colwart to serve on the Municipal Civil Service Board. Do you have a motion? Move. Move. Motion by Mayor Pro Tem Ricky Gonsalan, a second by Councilman Dustin Swear. Is there any discussion? And, and we have Mr. Cohort here. <laughs> any discussion or comments? It's a then, tough board. I appreciate you serving. Thank you. Yep. Then uh, to ask you to please vote your machines. Thank you. You've been doing that a long time, and we really do appreciate it. Uh, you, you keep them moving, that's for sure. Thank you. All right, 6C. Resolution 22-31, accepting a certificate of substantial completion for the Visitor's Pavilion Project and authorizing the mayor to execute any and all documentation in connection therewith. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion by second. Councilman David Broussard and a second by Count. Who was the second? Me. Councilwoman Deidre Ledbrader. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Me. Yes, ma'am. The inspection report. Um, the pricing breakdown for that. Did we kind of overprice <coughs> it to make sure we have enough funding for the job? Or? We didn't. We got lucky on that one. We got a really good price. We actually, the additional money we put into good use, uh, if that's what you're talking about. Or you mean for the? Like uh, number six, uh, to key two doors. Oh, Same. yeah, yeah. We just make sure we have enough. In other words, okay. we set, I, like, I understand. We set enough money on those items because if the contractor wouldn't do it, we would keep that money. Okay. So all that is is, I see what you're saying, any punch list item that's left, we come up with a dollar amount to hold for it okay. until they finish. And then, it's the cushion, basically. Yeah, well, yeah. Gotcha. it just is the hammer, if you will. It makes the contract to go back because it's not going to cost that much money to key a couple of doors. Right. Uh, right. That's why right. I was looking at no. like, oh, my gosh. Insurance policy. <laughs> Got to keep enough to make them want to come back and do yeah, the work. Yeah, it makes them come back and finish. And not that they wouldn't. We have reputable contractors, but you always want to hedge your bet on that. Right. Are you doing landscaping? I did. Oh, the brick. <laughs> Why do we have one brick that's missing? What happened to our brick? Uh, you know, our brick is coming. Uh, it's on the punch <laughs> list. Uh, you remember that we had a change. We had a couple change orders on the job. One was masonry to fix those areas after they did the demo with the brick. Right. They fixed it all except for one brick, okay? And there's one brick missing at the top. So we have the brick. Uh, it's going to be okay. Uh, but they're going to set the brick. Okay, good. <laughs> Freddie, I have an operations question. So is this considered a park and would fall under parks and rec, or Certainly. is it considered no, like public work? No, totally park. This is a, okay, uh, so they'll Bowling be Plaza is already a park. Okay, they'll be responsible for keeping They'll the be responsible for cleaning it. Like and, uh, yes, yes. Okay. Anybody else? And, and, we have pictures yes. if they want to see it. Yeah, Go put on. the pictures up. We're trying to do every meeting. I see y'all kept a restroom. I'm so sorry. No, that's okay. That's good. One was restroom. Was that for me? Uh, no, it was for a lot of people that from the very beginning when I said I was converted. We have one restroom. Like, no restroom it has a code right. on the door. It's, it's semi-public, okay? okay? But remember, the, through the ARPA plan, the new restrooms are coming. Oh, yeah. uh, the new restrooms are coming where we end up with restrooms behind the Steamboat Pavilion, a stage on top of it that has a roof, but nice restrooms. Those were not nice restrooms. Right. Uh, and the way they're going to be designed, we can control them better. Okay. Uh, but they're coming. But we did, since we could, we kept one little bit of restaurant. Okay. Uh, it's not really public. It'll be semi-public. Okay. 
because we need the big restroom. Just to piggyback yes. off of Dita's question, Councilwoman Reed's question, uh, and point of reference, it's going to be under Parks and Recreation, but for the record, Public Works is kind of like a support group for every department. If yeah, in other <laughs> words, what happens is, you know, and, and Joe is my go-to. In other words, if something happens that I need more manpower or more equipment, right. I'll call Joe and Joe, I'll say, Joe, go. he's cutting all those trees down in the park right. in that area that we want right. to do a little walking trail. The, drainage the big those. stuff, like right. anything big that happens, he's got all the equipment. Uh, Parks does a great job, but they just don't have the manpower and the equipment. So, yeah, they are back up. Okay. Are they, uh, do they work on Sundays? Uh, occasionally, yeah. When they have events, they occasionally do. Sometimes they flex out their time and, you know, uh, as much as we, we limit as much as we can because I got to watch our money. Right. So, like, for many events in Bullion Plaza, they'll set the chairs out on Friday and they don't really come pick them up till the Monday. Like if you notice, after all the veterans' events, we all everybody who's there picks the chairs up right. and stacks them off to the side. They stay there till Monday, uh, and then they come picking up. So I don't have to pay overtime. But right. but there are times that they do. Yes. Yeah, I'm more worried about keeping the bathrooms clean. Right. Because well, we, we don't want visitors the going in there. Future bathrooms. bathrooms are a mess. That that is. Uh, we are going to have to do that, and I agree. Okay. Those bathrooms will also be locked and unlocked. That was one of the problems that you really couldn't control the other ones, and I just kind of gave up at one point, but there was a lot of bad activity happening there. Right. Uh, but in the new design, I'm hoping that we end up with some flexibility. We might even have a small set of bathrooms that are open, and then in my scheme, and then you'd have a way to open up additional bathrooms. Okay. Because during the normal, like if you're not doing a festival and all of that, the more space you give people, the more you have to clean up, the more someone goes in there and does something that they you don't, don't really want them to do, they trash out 10 stalls instead of two. Right. So my idea, we haven't even talked about that, but I've seen that, is when you build a new one, we'll have, you know, phase one, and then when it's a festival or something, you'll be able to open up, you know, the second part. Um, I think that just makes yeah. sense. I didn't tell you all that yet, but sorry. You know. Gotcha. We didn't design it yet either. Uh, <laughs> hang on, who was next? I don't, I don't know. Go ahead. What's yes. the status on the kiosks? Have you ordered them? Or? Yes. Uh, I'm glad you asked that question. Um, the additional money that we had on this project, we had some money left because that's where I was heading. I didn't know where you were heading because we got some good bids. So with that money, we put that money toward the kiosk plus a $15,000 grant that we got. Uh, the kiosk frames are under construction now if they're not finished. We have been meeting on the content, um, and so they're really cool that there are a bunch of panels that are 24 inches by 36 inches, and when you total them up, there's 40-something, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah 40. So, and they'll bolt on. We'll wrap them, so that's really waterproof. And then the good thing is, you know, we want to do weird stuff like people don't do. This is going to get me into trouble. Uh, eat no Iberia. We're going to highlight restaurants. I know I'm going to forget some, and I'm going to have, we're not going to do chains. We're probably just going to do, you know, the unique okay. things that we have, okay? But let's just say somebody goes out of business. You just unbolt that panel, bring it back to Rick Patu, and they rewrap it, and you're done. So it's an easy way to kind of stay fresh. But we have set the categories for them from historic, the, our local architecture, our local history, our African-American history, our restaurants, our attractions. We're going to really mix it up, and I don't want you to go – like when you go to the, and look, they do a great job. I'm not knocking anybody. When you go to the Paris Visitors Center, ours needs to be different. You come into New Iberia, we're celebrating New Iberia. So we're going to put some things in there that maybe you normally wouldn't. Like if I could think of some weird New Iberia, you know, we're just going to put different stuff on there that gets people out and about to our local eateries, to our local attractions. Um, but we've met on the content. We all have homework. We're all working on it. I worked some this weekend on mine. Uh, going through historic photographs, going through just getting information. So they're under construction. I would say we're probably two months away from having the kiosk up. Yeah, okay. good something like that. Yeah. Oh. They going to be mobile? Actually, they will be able to be moved. We're trying to figure a way to hook them to the ceiling so somebody doesn't go in there and, you know, razzoo the place. But we'd be able to unhook them and move them out the way. Because my idea, my concept is police barricades on this side, police barricades on that side. Once we have the new stage, you buy your ticket. At, <coughs> under this pavilion, you roll the kiosk out the way. David has them designed where they stack, okay? So we roll them out the way. You sell tickets. Now we can do Downtown Alive, that kind of thing, you know, some uh, events that could bring money in, not to make money, but I say we do one, and then we could do the next three for free. Just take that money right back and roll it back in. And, and my idea to include the whole community is that every couple of months we do something not the same old thing that brings, you know, every part of town to come downtown. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the plan. Okay. 
Yes, sir, Mr. Broussard, Councilman Broussard. Since we're talking about parks, I thank you, Mr. Mayor, for this last week. Uh, Park View Park, I will park off of Broward. Mm -hmm. put the implement, you know, put everything in. Yes, sir. About $20,000 we spent more in that park. Yep. So I thank you, sir. We have some more work to do on it, but it sure looks nice. Okay. We appreciate it. Not a problem. Anybody else in this project? Then uh, please vote your machines. Thank you all very much. <clears throat> 6D. Resolution 22-32, awarding contract to Beard Construction Company for the historic district trails project and authorizing the mayor to execute any and all documentation in connection therewith. Do you have a motion? Motion. Second. Motion by Councilwoman D. Johnson Reed and a second by Mayor Pro Tem Ricky Gosselin. Is there any discussion? Yes. So. Want to talk about budget? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I, I yeah, you know that's where I'm going. Okay, so as I yes, read through this, it said that uh, I guess the um, the opening or whatever they bid was like two hundred some thousand, two hundred twenty-four thousand, and then we took out some things to get them within the range or below our budgeted amount. And I'm just trying to figure out, do we think any of, are any of the things that we actually decided to deduct, is that like the electrical work and light posts, is that something that we're going to have to do later? I mean, because that feels like, well, you know what I, I think. Okay. okay. All right. I'll tell you the story. Yes, yes, and yes. It's all good, though. Okay. okay. I got it all figured out. Okay. We do deduct alternates so that we can always be in the money. And in these weird times we're in, I want deduct alternates on every job because I don't want to give money up from the state and then go to rebid something, and then it's way out of budget because the costs have continued to rise. I want to lock my contract. He's not here tonight, but I tell him that to his face. I want to lock my contractor up and that price up as quick as I can. So we got the bids back. We analyzed them. Certainly, we need the electrical. We analyzed them and said, let's take the deduct alternates. Let's get the contract in place, and then we'll figure out the electrical. Okay, we might have to do some value engineering, we might have to redesign, I would like that to be a little cheaper, and then I'd come back to the council and say, okay, we need the electrical. But we got lucky on this one, okay, every once in a while. Well, they say the harder you work, the luckier you get. Uh, this time, we just got lucky. Um, the funding source, which is the state, when I called them and said, okay, here's the situation, we, we want the job, we're going to take the job, we're going to get it in, we're going to have to talk about how we get more money. Well, he, today, he offered more money. So what's going to happen is we'll have our 20% match, but that's not a big deal. I mean, that's, you're still making 80% off your money. So he's going to come up with, so that we have between our match and his money, the state's money, the $63,000 we need for the electrical. Okay. So that puts the electrical back, because you're exactly right. Who wants something that's not safe and doesn't have light in, okay? Right. I would have come back to us, and you can plan on that's going to happen sometime. We're not always going to have a, a pull a rabbit out the hat. The sidewalk and stair, which kind of helps in that area to access the uh, marina, well, it was $8,000. Instead of spending the $8,000, again, my, my uh, Joe, <laughs> Public Works, we're going to get Public Works to do that. So that will cut our cost because our guys go to work every day, and it's just buying a little bit of concrete. So they will pour the concrete and do the steps. Okay. Uh, the other alternate, I really didn't mind that we made the sidewalk five feet wide, so that wasn't a lot of money either. Um, but that's going to be our approach, our team approach from now on, is get us some deduct alternates, take what we can get, because I'm telling you, wait a month, and then every contractor is pulling their bids because they're going up. Uh, so this one worked, but that's going to be my approach on, you know, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous when you think. It's a great problem to have, okay? 12.5 on the roads, 10.4 of Biden money, uh, President Biden money. Uh, <laughs> The state capital outlay, we get a couple of million dollars a year. The $3 million bond for the Pepperplex. Uh, the probably $8 million of the $12, $13 million worth of grants we've gotten that we're still in the process of spending. I mean, we have, we'll be doing this a, a lot. Yeah. Probably every meeting, but this is a good problem to have. On the flip side, we're we trying to manage an animal at, at a time that it's crazy. I mean, between, you know, our inflation rate and the fact that the supply chain is still not right, you know, we're going to make a lot of weird decisions as we go. All we're trying to do is, and, and Paul and David are setting it up that way, is give us the opportunity to keep moving. I don't want to ever give money back. I don't want to ever not spend money. So we need to, you know, just be smart in how we do this. Okay. I mean, it just... Yeah, should, you're right. We also need to just kind of keep track of how many of these we do because eventually we're going to be 
out of money. <laughs> Whoop. Man. <laughs> No, this is like... What is that, a problem for every solution? <laughs> We're going to be fine. No, I, I agree with you that there is going to be a point that we, we're not there yet, though. No. And as long as our taxes come in good, in other words, Kevin, I'm constantly on him, like, you know, where I'm at with my money, what's coming in. I get a tax report every month that I see the business taxes. I can't yeah. share that publicly. But I get that for every business, and right. it is a monitoring game. There could be a time, you know, look, we live in some weird times right now. Something drastic could happen that we would have to say, okay, we're not taking any more. We're just chewing what we bit. But we're not okay. there yet. All right, we're good. Let's then. I just wanted to make sure. I mean, if we, I mean, it, it seemed like the lighting was a big deal in electrical. I'm of course. like, okay, we pulled that out, but we're going to have to put that back in somewhere. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Well, handle that today. But totally, look, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other questions, comments? Then I'd ask you to please vote your machines. Thank you all very much. Seven A. Introduction of special ordinance number 2021-2022-06, amending the budget to reflect debt service on 2020 refunding bond and to reflect cost of contract for lighting on city slips and to set for public hearing on March 15th, 2022. Do I have a motion? Move. Motion. motion by the Mayor Pro Tem, Ricky Gosselin, and a second by uh, Councilwoman Dita Johnson-Reed. Is there any discussion on this item? So this is, um, this is the lighting that's... Um, can you explain which project this is re yeah. related to? Aaron, can you pull that other graphic up? Yeah, come just, on up, there. The site plan you just closed. Which one? The, the map, the drawing you just closed. Okay. Pull that back up. Yep. You want the... Uh... Yeah. This is City Slips, where we bid a couple of times, you remember? We threw the bids out and rebid it and got it cheaper? Laser yeah. To do those lights, but he'll... he'll so okay. while we have them, I, I like, wasn't sure if this was that or right. I know, but this is, like, this is that so lighting that ones. we actually got lucky rebid and, show. you know, got a better price. Okay. So if you notice right below the number two, where they have a detail of a stair. Uh, okay, up there? Yeah. Okay. There's That's a the uh, the pat, sort of a, a dockside <laughs> area. Um, <laughs> that is city slips. And so the, the lighting is going to go along the water side of that dock. Okay. So it's at a lower level, so it'll help to illuminate the shoreline. And the path lighting, which is the darker pathway, we have lights along there, so that helps illuminate the upper part of it. Right. So. And I understand now. I just wasn't sure which lighting which project one it we were was. talking yeah. about. We have yeah. so many little lighting projects oh, I know. And, and these about. are two, three, four projects all in this one little drawing yeah. between <laughs> the park drawing. and... And the and once we start with the ARPA, we have a ton of lighting projects because they fit. We change an LED. We're adding lights in parks. Right. Lighting is going to be a big thing over the next. But I mean, you know, can't go wrong with that. Right. Anybody else? Then I'd ask you to please vote your machines. Thank you. Seven B. Ordinance number introduction of ordinance number twenty twenty two dash zero three adding Article 6 of Chapter 38 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of New Iberia, consisting of Sections 38 through 90, dash 38 through 95, prohibiting smoking in specified areas, and to set for public hearing on March 15, 2022. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Motion by Councilwoman D. Johnson-Reed and a second by Councilwoman Brooke Morcott. Is there any discussion? Uh... Councilman Of course, I'm going to have questions. Okay, that's fine. But I do, I do have that's a why question. why we're here. Makes it fun. And I appreciate Mr. Renee pointing me out. I appreciate that. Uh, I just want to pick one and give it a hard time. Oh, um, so A4, it stays smoking within 20 feet of entrance or exit of any building or facility. So private bar, you have a sidewalk. Then you have a street. The sidewalks may be, what's the, what's the width of a sidewalk from the front door? Depends on the street. You know, I mean, Main Iber Street's. Iberia Street. Main Street sidewalks are like Main over eight feet. Okay, Iberia eight feet. Street sidewalks are about uh, five and six, maybe six. I'd say six. So the, if the establishment doesn't. So the establishment wants to allow or say smoking on the sidewalks, 
where they have their table set up outside, do they have to get a special permit because they're within that 20 feet? Or they got to go stand in the middle of the street to smoke? Jeff? Are we talking about 3892A4? So. Yeah, that's the one he's reading. Right, so okay. if it's 20 feet. Yeah, that but that's any building or facility occupied or operated by the city. But what about private Any business? of its agencies. So the, the private yeah. business doesn't... No, not that, that's anything. city and parish. Okay. So, so my peeps no, can't smoke by the door anymore. Yep. Okay, so there's no parish. buffer zone, in other words, when it comes to outside the building to the inside the building for a private business, like a bar or a saloon. Mm -hmm. I thought we did have something in there. That's what that. I, that's, I was under, I, thought it, yeah. I, was I thought it was 20 feet. It's as 20 well. feet. Well, yeah. I don't think, yeah, I think the one you were reading was about public Okay, buildings. sorry, I yeah. pointed out but, 84. But, but I do think there is another one in there that's supposed to be 20 feet from the door. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, so where's that one? So they'd have to walk down the sidewalk if that's the yeah. case. Yeah, you can't go opposite direction. Yeah, I mean, you know, you wouldn't have to go get I, in I the get street that. and get hit by a car. You could go down the sidewalk, but you'd have to go down the sidewalk, I guess. But it's still in front of a private building. Yeah. You're still going to be in front of a building if there's a sidewalk. I don't have an answer for that. I mean, you're <laughs> not a, wrong. I mean, it's a legitimate question. That's yeah, why I'm yeah, asking. Yeah. You okay, go from so doorway to doorway. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. So, so what particular 20 feet are you talking about? Any? So from the front of it, just use. In the, in the, in the so just use a, uh, the front of a bar, for example. Say I'm not picking on them, but Carabellas. And you got eight foot of sidewalk. And they want to allow smoking on that sidewalk. That's where they have the, the table set up. Can they, do they have to get a special permit or anything like that? Or if there's if this to be not the case, you have to go stand in the middle of the street to smoke because it's within or across the street. Okay, but where's the 20 foot? That's I was under the impression that that was in the uh, ordinance. I'm not seeing it in here. I'm reading. I'm. I'm I'm looking. I don't see it in here anymore. It was in here though, because we talked about that. It just says smoke within 20 feet of an entrance or exit to any building or facility occupied or operated by the city or any of its agencies or a building or facility occupied or operated by the parish or any of its agencies in the city. Uh, I'm reading the rest. Okay, it says if you look at um, 3892 B, go down to number four mm -hmm. A. There you go. It says as provided in subsection A four, ah. which is that's A four. So, so it's there? just it's it is so there. It's, it's, it's just there's reference or. in the other one. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why it's written. It's just the way it's written. But it's still there. But it's still 20 feet. It's right, still it's still 20, 20 feet, I yes. I don't think it's 20 feet from any entrance. I think that's only A4. Oh, wow. Uh-oh. It says the outdoor area places of employment, except as follows, and then A provided in sub subsection A4, which is what Justin, Dustin just read. Right, so A4 is an exception to saying that you don't prohibit it in outdoor spaces. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Also not apply to Okay. So basically, they can stand by the door. In other words. So they can just get out of the bar. I think so. The outside. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. it says as provided. Yeah. In other words, don't do like you're doing in A4. <laughs> <laughs> well, but. Mm, that's not the way I read it. But okay. Well, okay, but you have a mm. prohibition, and then you have B as an exception. And so four is an exception that says you can't, it says you can't prohibit in the following places, but you can prohibit it under A4, which is only the, the public buildings. Correct. Yeah, so I, I think that's the only way to read it. Okay. Even though it says four, four says the outdoor area of places of employment, I mean, it's not specific just to the city and the parish, it's saying places of employment. And then A says, as provided in subsection A4. In other words, it's saying you don't have to do like A4. 
Yeah. That's not the way I read it. So you can't prohibit it in outside areas of employment, except you can prohibit it in the A4 situation, Correct. which is a public building outside the area of employment. I don't think this says you can't smoke within 20 feet of an entrance to a place of employment. I don't think that's what it says. Okay. Well, I was yes, sir. Impression that that's okay. what we discussed before. Yeah. So that's why I mentioned it. That's why I think we had some discussion about we that. We did. We did okay. about the 20 feet. Mm hmm and we had it in committee meeting too. Yes, I do remember that. <laughs> and y'all said it's That's 20 feet. That's why I was in my head. Fine. 20 yeah. feet. Anyway. Well. Okay. Because we said 20 feet wasn't that far. Still okay. isn't that far. No, it's not. But. Unless so you're Carabellas. And I'm just using them as an example. It could be cantinas. It could be all. Yeah. Every, just they would have just have to general. go a little bit further down. So, Carabellas would go in front of the canteen, or the canteen would go in front of the <laughs> It's all good. Or any, it really doesn't even have to be a bar. It could be yeah, an insurance agent. Right. It could be right. victims. It could be whatever. Mm -hmm. is, is that the footage? You're right. So, so that. Put them smoking in the street or smoking in front of another business. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But you're still breaking the law then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we don't know that. <laughs> no, I think you can Look. smoke in front of a business unless that business. Correct. Is public or private? Is, is the uh, is the public city or parish? I think that's the way this is written. Okay. Yep. 4B. All right. Any, you still have the floor. you have anything else? I mean, of course, everybody knows my stance on it. We've already discussed uh -huh. it many a times. Yeah, I have well. nothing against what y'all are trying to do. That's not the whole purpose of why I ask questions or whatnot. I mean, I think y'all do an awesome job with the ordinance committee. Uh, it just, I have a personal opinion, and I'm, I guess I'm entitled to it. Absolutely. Of course. That's, that's why I you got it. a button. That's why I have a button. And like I said before, <laughs> I that's, just my, tell that's people, my opinion right, right They didn't like how I voted. I said, well, they gave me a button. Yeah. <laughs> you know. All right. Well, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Though, this is America. Of course it is. Of course it is. I agree. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, so, yes, sir? I feel, you know, I studied it pretty hard and, and looked over it, and I, and I think y'all did a great job in ours. And it's, and it's not against the health. I think all you guys presented <coughs> accurate facts, you know, but I just think that, you know, government is trying to put too many restrictions on business. And it, in my opinion, I, if you can name me, name me businesses in the city of Niagara that allow smoking right now, can you name them? I'm asking, I'm mean, just for reference, can you name them? You can name them, name me, name me the businesses that allow smoking. That allow smoking. Right. Most of your nightclubs. Yeah, bars. Oh, wait, wait. No. Bars. Okay, what'd you just say? Bars. Most of your nightclubs. Oh, so Quarter Tavern, Bourbon Street Hall, uh -huh. Emerald Billets. Yeah. Well okay. Be All right. So, so hall. bars. So, really basically, bars. this ordinance is targeting bars. Correct? Not really. Uh, well, you just said bars allow smoking. No, no. You asked the question and I answered. Okay. All right. Okay. Hang on. Hang so, on. So I'm just saying, <laughs> I, I went around town and, and just drove around and, and went inside businesses and looked and it's non-smoking, non-smoking. Businesses govern themselves. And they govern, I, I don't let people smoke in my tractors. So I mean, I govern myself. So I think, I think, <laughs> business, <laughs> I think business owners are allowed the right to make a decision based on their business principles and how they govern their business. And I, I agree with all the facts. Smoking bad, I never used tobacco in my life. I disagree with it. I don't let smoking in my truck. I agree with it, but I just think that for you to go and step across the line and tell a business what he can and can't do just just gives me a problem right here. And, and I'm just out of my own opinion. I think Renee works very, very hard in what she does, and I'm proud of what do. And I think tonight they're going to get their wishes. I think, you know, they're going to get what they want. But my stance is that, you know, we need to protect private business just a little bit. That's my opinion only. Thank you. Anybody else? I'm not so, here, Mr. Goss. Hang on. He you already, you already talked. Did you speak yet? Mm -hmm. No, you didn't speak yet. Okay, who who had the floor next? Mr. Right. Mr. Bruce, I can go ahead. Okay, Councilman Bruce, I'm just trying. I'm with you. Traffic cop. Mr. Gosh, uh, I can't tell you any business I ever go in. No smoking. Restaurants, no smoking. It's only bars. We're going through a dictatorship that we're seeing right now. <laughs> Dude, I don't want to be a dictator <laughs> staying that the people that smoke, turn it. You know, I just don't want to be caught saying I'm a dictator. Right. You know, if it's just bars, I don't go to bars. I never <laughs> smoked in my life. <coughs> I don't drink. Drive a school bus. Get a DWI, you're over. <laughs> so I stay away from those kind of things.
but Rick, I'm with you. And I'll holler it louder. I don't want to be a dictator. So at least leave them some place that wherever they want to go, they can do it because they have a lot of smokers. But I just don't want to get caught being a, a total dictator myself. Thank you. Uh, who's next? Yes, ma'am. So um, I'm, ab I'm absolutely 100% behind this ordinance. I think it is a health and safety issue. There are people that work in those bars that deserve to be protected like all other workers and other businesses. And so if there are business owners who are not protecting as employees, it is our job to make sure that every employee who, has a, who works in our city can be protected from, you know, things happening uh, that actually affect their health in a negative way. So I'm 100% behind us moving this thing forward. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And you know I am 100% behind moving it forward. And, uh, I, you know, regardless to what we do tonight, which I think is going to pass, uh, we are the ones that vote for it. We're not dictators. Uh, nobody's a dictator. Um, but if, uh, well, <laughs> technically, no, he's, you know, he's supposed to be democratically elected, even though he fills the ballot box. That's a different story there. But, you know, some people get away with stuff like that. But, um, no, we're not dictators, and we're not trying to put the muscle on, on cutting the rights of businesses. But it is our job to, to keep our citizens safe and uh, healthy. And that's where I... I draw the line right there. We're doing what's best for our community and the citizens therein. And this will keep them healthy and have a safe work environment. So um, hopefully <laughs> everybody may come along. Everybody may not. <laughs> but um, it, it's all for the better good. Thank you. Yes, sir. No, for me, man, it's, it's the smart thing to do, and it's to vote in the interest of public health, for me. And I don't see any business owners here saying, why are you trying to shut down my bar? Every issue that we have had in the past where it was an effect in a business, like the storage, the storage, the dumping oh, of the man. storage, it was full of people. Tonight we don't have not one bar owner in here saying we don't want it. Not saying that they weren't notified or whatever. I don't know if they don't read the papers. And I'm not, go and again, I'm not going to attack them for not being here because I believe in public health and safety. And I believe that at the end of the day, we were elected to make decisions for public health and safety. And I believe that for me, I, I want to be on the right side of history with this, right side of health. And that's, that's where I'm going with it. I, I just see Lafayette. It never hurt Lafayette, New Orleans. It never hurt <coughs> New Orleans. So I think we just need to get with the time. I look at it more as let's, let's get with the times and stop, you know, living in an antiquated mindset concerning businesses and capitalism. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I might as well, since oh, everyone, yes, else, or Everybody everyone else, else already did, said know? something. Everybody else did, you know. Round table, so yeah. Still not changing my mind. Still supporting uh, this ordinance right here. Um, and I know everyone has their own opinion. That's why we're up here, you know, to yeah. voice our own opinions. And for whatever reason, we have to vote a certain way. So it is what it is, you know. So it's government at work. Exactly. So that's it. Thank you. Justin, you had your hand up since everybody's had the floor. Uh, now you get it again. Oh. Appreciate that. Question I have is, okay, so Marlo, you just, so if you're saying that we didn't have anybody come forward and, and voice their opinion on why we, we are doing what we're doing. So if you took the exceptions and you just said, okay, it's an all or nothing deal, and you just took the tobacco business out, you just took the cigar bars out, they would have been right here wondering why we're doing what we're doing. So my thing is, why are we excluding the cigar bars and the retail tobacco businesses and those things? But I mean, because they would have been right that's here. That's what they sell. If you walk in there, that's what you're going there for. Everybody, if you don't smoke, you ain't got no business in there. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, if you don't smoke, you don't have no business in there. Yeah, 51% of their revenue. gift for your husband or wife who smoke. 
And y'all been doing it like that for a long time anyway. Because <laughs> it's 51% of the revenue. And, 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 and another thing I forgot I have the floor. I don't I know, agree on, with that. Hang on, yeah, all, I know. all or nothing, but know, that's but just we how it's written in the order. You asked him a question so he can answer I can answer. Yeah, he answered right. answer the but, question. But he that's not, the question. I he can't be a free-for-all. <laughs> <laughs> we got to We got But I did answer, though, right? Yeah, Oh, thanks. So you can ask a question, but you have the floor, but. So I just, that's the thing when I'm getting at the 51%. I don't agree with it, but it's how it is in the ordinance, and I believe it's going to pass. Great, that's fine, but. I just felt like pointing that out. We would have had people here mm -hmm. if we would have said, okay, all or nothing. <laughs> They'd have been lined up by that door. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, he has the floor to, you know. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, I would yield. No, you don't have to. You got, you got something else? I, no, I'm good now. I just wanted to voice that out. Just. Okay. All right. You had, a, you had something you want to say? I, I'm going to whisper this one. <laughs> Laugh yet already took the pain. <laughs> okay. And it was a hot button thank, issue thank you years okay. ago in Lafayette, but that's over now. Mm -hmm. This room would have been filled <laughs> if, been if it wasn't the trend. Okay. This room would have been filled if it wasn't the trend. Because when Lafayette went through it, the business owners, flop, all them guys who had clubs in Lafayette, they was out there campaigning against it. Lafayette already took the brunt of the force. So okay. we're just following suit Dang with what was happening in our community. All right. Thank you. Anybody else have any other comments? Man, I love y'all, yeah. I love them. Uh, no other comments? Then uh, I'd ask you to please vote your machines. Thank y'all. And remember, this is just the first step. So next meeting it comes back. We have a public hearing next time. We could hear from some people. Who knows? But, you know, this is just our first preliminary step. Thank y'all. Uh, Jimmy Landry. How to make property standards. Sit I'm clerk. Revisit the state of buildings at 515 Dague Street in District 2 in action. Resolution 22 33. Jimmy? Give her a second to put some pictures up, and uh, if you don't mind. The pictures are the same as, it, as they were. I know. We'll let, her put them, let her put them up before you get started. That's four meetings. The house is in the same condition it was the last time we met. Okay. Nothing done. Except he took all the siding off of three sides. Mm -hmm. And he did. Okay, hang on. Let's dig you. What is, is that the gentleman who was offshore? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's District 2, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he got good, excuse me. He Sir. Got, he got good yes. notice of tonight's meeting. Yes. We mailed a letter on January 20th. Okay. Is he in town? I have no idea. I haven't heard from him. Do, do we send certified letters? Okay. Do we have to sign for it? Um, no. It's good. Okay. All right. First I mean, class. He said something about being out for, what, 120 days or something. Right. So is he in town? I mean. That, that we don't know. I know he got the service, so I don't know. I mean, uh, to me, I know it, 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 it looked like progress one way or the other. Either you tearing it down or about to rewrap re it. it. It don't look like it looked when, when he came here the first time. It's progress one way or the other. And I didn't talk to him either. But the obvious is, I mean, it didn't have the side wasn't off. And none of that was off. So it looked like he either ready to tear it down or rebuild it at this point. So he's making pro progress. That's all I can speak to, the progress that I'm seeing. Man, they got some houses in this community that ain't made the list that look worse than that that's still standing. <laughs> so I'm, you know, <laughs> if, if, if I can at least contact the person and see them do that, I guess you can get them. What do you suggest on time wise? I mean, well, the next revisit date is gonna be June the seventh. Yeah, I'm all right with that. That house saying I ain't got not one complaint for, from that house right there. He making co uh, progress because everything we do. I don't care what we say. Everything we do is complaint driven, and I ain't got not one complaint about that house since that guy been up here, and I see progress. So June seven, you know, give him some more time. Now, now I'm gonna try to. I'm between now and June seven. I'm gonna. I need to know. We need to know. What are you gonna do with this house? You know, cause that now we're getting into letting them know that government's serious. Your job is serious. Public safety is, is serious, but I do see a little, a little, a little progress from what we last saw. He either looked like he turned it down or about to rebuild it. I'm gonna say it one more time. I think I, I said that four I can't, times. I can't say because he hadn't called. Right, but he does have a permit, right? 
Yeah. How long is this permit for? Usually six months. Is it six months months up? No. Well, there we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other comments? Yes, sir. So, Marla, just my thoughts. I think I think you you you're trending in the right direction, but when you say making progress, so when the next one comes up and they just change the door, is that progress too? Uh, Ricky, I'm not I'm doing the hypotheticals. We're dealing with this house. All right, I'm just asking. That's progress. <laughs> the hypotheticals get me in trouble. Yeah. I, I don't know about the next house. Smart, next smart, house. Smart, smart man. man. But I'm just smart man. You said progress. When that happens in my district, I'll let you know. All right. Oh, man. So, so I mean. Um, yeah, so you still have the floor. <coughs> yeah. I, mean, I, I think the guy, the guy showed some effort working on it. You know, and, uh, clean. Uh, it's clean. Yeah. I guess, uh, just. We'll That's what we're looking for, people to make an effort. So, I, you know, I guess we'll just go to June, in my opinion. And Rick, that's what I thought progress is, you know. Yeah. Just pick it on. Make an effort. I know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're just really looking for action. We don't want to represent empty lots. We don't want to tear things down if we don't so have to. It's the money. So, <laughs> you know, yeah, if he tears it down, the rest, it's a win. Yeah, right no matter which way he coming in, it could be a win. A little pressure, a little more pressure will make him take it down. Or her up and put it up where he at right now. Okay. All right. Any other comments? So I'll, is I'll make a motion, a motion, you say, to revisit. Okay. We have a motion on the floor uh, by I'll second it. Councilman Marlon Lewis and a second by Mayor Pro Tem Ricky Gonsolin to revisit on June the 7th. Any other further discussion? Good question. Then please vote your machines. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you all. Right, AB. Revisit the state of buildings located at 103 Doris Street, District 3, and action resolution 22 34. It's your recommendation, Mr. Lucy, <laughs> first. There's no, there's no permit, nothing's been done. Down. No. But Hang on. No, but yes, down. And imagine I know we gave whole, notice. We gave imagine notice. the whole council for the whole neighborhood. Has been we, putting up with this thing for four months. He hasn't boarded or put a nail in that house. I'm asking this whole council that sometimes have doubted me on this. <laughs> got to go to me, and I wanted to get it down the second time it was up. It's been up four times. Uh, the neighborhood deserves better. So I'm asking the whole council to vote unanimously to take this house down. Okay, so that's a motion? Enough. You have a motion to take it down. Bye-bye. <laughs> uh, yes, our city attorney has his hand I, up. Yeah, I just want to point out we did send notice, yes. right? And um, notify the brief. Dr. Adele, asthma, and the state of Louisiana. I also notified. Uh, that's what the attorneys gave, yeah. gave me. So we did extra. Okay, do but I also notified Frank Barber, who's his attorney, and asked Frank to be here tonight. Frank said he was going to try to be here tonight. I don't see Frank here tonight. So um, they got plenty of notice on this one. If we're going to demolish it, we need to give them a fixed period of time. So we ought to say if we're going to demolish it, let's do it as soon as the appeal period runs okay. out, which is five days. I have days. one little fact I need to share. Uh, uh -huh. Dr. Dale called our office today uh -huh. and said he had another heart attack and that he would. How did he put it there? What did he say? He called and said he had another heart attack and he can't come to be stressed at this meeting. Uh, Sandra, took it. Sandra took that. I don't, you know. yeah. This is a certain I, unique situation. Yeah. Well, I know. Yeah, I'm just, yes, sir. Well, I don't know if it's another heart attack after the one that Frank told me about I don't last know. week. I don't know. <laughs> but I sent the notice to Frank and I said, if your man can't make it, please show up on his His representation behalf. should be here. Yeah. He's got an attorney. Um, and there's no permit, right? No. Okay. Nothing. I I'm just like to be back. fully transparent, you know. Can I make a comment? Uh, yes, sir. I, I just think that heart attack or no heart attack, there's other people that can go get his permit, and he never got it, so that's my opinion. Okay. Yes, people that work for him or whatever could have done some work on his house. And this, you know, there's a lot of people I think he's associated with that could have did something, too. So we're sorry that he's hurting. But we can only take so much. And it's been for six months this house has been out. Mr. Mayor, I'll second David Broussard's motion. Okay. So I have a motion and a second on the floor, but is there any more discussion? I see hands up. Uh, I, yes, sir. I, 
I also got a call from Dr. Day about his sickness, uh, about his heart attack. Uh, Doc also said, you know, he said he's stressing him out, and he he, he also said, he said, man, you know, I, I'm ready to sell some of this. So that was some new stuff for me for Doc. Doc told me today he's ready to sell some of this stuff. He said, I'm ready to sell all of it. So my thinking was, not, not to dig in your district too much, if, if Doc talking about selling some of this stuff, and they got some new investors <coughs> out there, you know, do we, do, we want, do we want them to try to buy some empty lots, or do we want them to try to buy the houses as they are? And that's my question. Do we want them to try to buy some empty lots or the houses as they are? If Doc, sure it's the back side of that house. Doc is sick and Doc truly wants to sell it. I don't know. Sometimes I think I should have been a, an attorney because I think the whole <laughs> thing through. No, seriously. Because there's good. a way to prove if right Doc there. is serious about his illness and his selling, and then the decision would be made. <coughs> that's from me. Every Not I understand. Okay. Uh, every every come. meeting, a new story. <laughs> you come next. Okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. So the only thing I think we we need to think about is um, I know the la the first time he was up here. I mean, he was very emotional, and then we heard he had a heart attack, and then we, now we hear we, we're hearing that he had a second heart attack. I, I think that we have to be somewhat empathetic about somebody who's sick. We don't know how sick he was between those heart attacks. So I just say let's, you know, let's make sure that we are being compassionate about his, his health as we make this decision because we don't want to seem like we're not being compassionate about his situation. And, I mean, I know we say things like someone else can go and get it, but we just don't know how sick he was or he is. So I'm just asking that we think about and maybe be a little more compassionate about this. Somebody could okay. have been here and should have been here. Okay. Boy. Any other discussion? Well, I just thought I thought it was a commendable thing for him to call me. Uh, you know, it, well, why he didn't call me? Well, I didn't get a chance. He called me <laughs> later on. Oh, why he call you? One at a time. One at a time. Why he didn't call you? Hang on, David. One at a time. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> we have a first and a second. Do we have any more discussion? Y yes, sir. I, I just think I, I, I hear the comments coming from, but I think that, you know, if we look at the facts, this has been up here four times. We requested his attorney to come. He never got a permit. And I specifically told him to go get a permit. If he was a, never got a permit, a heart attack or his employees, that could have happened. That didn't happen. So to me, we see no intention to do better. We, we, we're in the same position we were four weeks ago. I mean, until we decide as a council to do the right thing, like we're doing for smoking, make the right decision in public safety, and tear it down, we ain't going to get the message across. You know, it's my opinion only. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Councilman Roussard. No. We have a vote to go further in another month or two or three. I want the same ones that go vote to save this house, to come walk with me and tell that neighborhood why we can't get rid of that <coughs> house. They're on my back hard. And some good neighbors, some good people, some retired veterans live on that neighborhood and they're they barking all day and it's on the main street of New Iberia. Look at that right there. Look at that. It's worse than any country farmhouse you want to find. Look at the back side. Front side looked fair. But it's bad. And I've been up here four times begging this council to help me get rid of this house. So I want each and every one that votes to help me to, to go another two or three months to come walk with me in that neighborhood and tell them why we can't take it down. Because it's so I. I see it for the health. But boy, he's been playing with us. He told us about the health last time. He could have came, he could have brought his, all his workers. I know he has four or five workers at his chiropractor place, his secretary, somebody come in here and talk for him. We don't see anybody. We don't see a lawyer in here. We don't see anybody from the family to talk about that house. So look, we got to tend to the people that live on that street and please come with me and talk to them and tell them why we giving them another two or three months. That's what we're doing right now. It'll be June 7th before it's back on this table. You know, that's a long time. 
I'll be in here with an arm all operated on and wagging it. <laughs> still getting along here and then here. Now we'll be here to to go at it again. But that's a long time for the neighborhood. Wait, again. To really look at this thing. Look at the backside of that. And I look at it today. That's ridiculous for them to look at that every day. And nothing's been done. I asked them for a whole year and more. Put a board on that house. Board the windows so we can't see through and through that house. He won't even do that when he was healthy. But I'm sorry, I have to speak for the neighborhood itself, and I want each and every one to come walk with me and talk to them neighbors and tell them why it's still up. I'm sorry. That's how I feel. Thank you. No, well, that's why we're here. Well, he brought the same whining about, I'm sorry, about the heart attack two months ago. Now we're in the same predicament again. <coughs> and if I own a house like that in between, we'd have to do something. It had been down, or we'd had to a, a normal regular person would have done something with that house. But I'm sorry, now y'all get me upset. No, that's all right. Thank you, sir. Is there any other comments? Okay, well, we have a motion to second. Uh, please vote your machines. Wait a minute now. Oh. Yes is to tear it down. Yes is to tear it down. Right. That's your motion. Five five no, yeah, five yes. Right. yeah, yes is to tear, tear it down. down. Yes, sir. No. To the appeal. Gives them time, right? Five days. Yep. Okay. You ready? Let's go. Yes, sir. <laughs> Vote your machines. Sure we knew what was going on. Ready, let's go. All right, thank y'all. No, let's go. Eight C. Sure. Revisit the State of Buildings located at 811 Edna Street in District 5 and Action Resolution 22-35. Pull that one up and... Backwards. He Jimmy? Had, he had it taken the siding off. It's all over the ground. Oh, wow. There's a couple of piles scattered on the property. They didn't take the down tree in the front out, and they haven't fixed anything. <coughs> and this has been like this for a while. Since the last meet? Yeah, because that happened right afterwards, and nothing's been done since then. And this is a... Dina Johnson <laughs> <laughs> this is the one that I think it's owned by the company outside of the, the uh, California. Yeah, Lady exactly. So, so I'm actually more, I'm more ready to say tear it down from those people because they don't live in our community than somebody who actually lives in our community. Okay. Because they have no investment. They, they don't have to care about what condition they leave our community in. So my recommendation is we tear it down. Okay, great. Uh, Jeff, you had your hand up. And then yeah. I'll call so the rest of you. I have good notice like to him. To yes. check that, yeah. Okay. The legal part. Yeah, we need to say after the appeal delay, which is five days, if we're going to demolish it. These are the guys who bought the property. Um, Civic Source. Civic Source. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for that reason, we were nice to them. Yep. And communicated with them, and I've called them, and I've emailed them. I haven't heard from them in some time. I I haven't heard from them in a while either. I contacted them before the last meeting. And I told her, you know, all they did, this is where it was at, at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. They came in, I want to say around the Christmas holidays. Yep, yep. Worked one or two days, tore all the siding <laughs> off and left. And, and I haven't seen back. anybody or anything and since. I, I actually passed by there just to see, you know, from time to time to see if any work's going on. And there has not been any work nothing. going on in no, that I house. No, I know that. Nothing. Nothing since Christmas. Okay. Uh, we had some people on this side. Yes, sir. So, Dee, Dee your recommendation is to tear, that to tear it down. down. They don't live in our community. So they don't get to just yes, leave our community that's like this. You see, you want to tear it down. I agree. Yes. It, there's no permits on it, huh? Yeah, yeah, they have a permit. permit. permit 13. Okay. But I'm good. I'll, I'll second Dee Dee's motion. Okay. Yep. Is there any other discussion? I know they ain't going to come back because they abandoned a couple of houses in my district like that. Once they stop returning phone calls and emails, they're done. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have a first and a second. Is there any other discussion? Then I'd ask you to please vote your machines. Thank you. Madam <coughs> Clerk? Revisit the State of 18. Building located at 318 Week Street, District 5, in action. Resolution 22 36. Owners here. Okay. Hello, how you doing, everybody? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, please state your name and tell oh, us. Uh, my what's name is Asma. A S M A. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Uh, like you see, we concentrate this time. Uh, the carpenter was working for me. He moved back to Morgan City. His mama fell down. She had a health issue, but anyway, I hired somebody else. We start on the back porch, which is that's the major thing in that house. And mostly we did the, the roofing. We work on the roofing. We replace all the uh, tin, the one in the back. You saw that. And we've been what doing the a lot of work. That? No, the, uh, on the top, the roofing. Uh, the tin. You got a lot more to do on that roof then. Yeah. And also the homeless guy, the one I had, he sold everything in that house. It's everything, over 2,000 sheets of plywood, all my saving the last five, six years. He I sold them out. I yeah. haven't been called for any inspections. I haven't been notified about anything. The only time I see anything is when I go to take pictures for the house. I don't we supposed to call you? I don't know. We're supposed to call you. Yeah. You go there anyway. Before you put things on the ceiling, cover up. You're supposed to call for inspection? We, we only put the two sheets, that's it. He put, and I told him to stop on that because we want to do the outside, and that's why right now no rain coming inside or nothing. At least, you know, I'm doing work on it. I'm not, you know, like, I'm doing a lot of effort in that house. I'm a single parent. I only have one little income, and, but yet I'm doing a lot of work on it. Okay, uh, so this is also in my district. Yes, ma'am. And... Um, I mean, I can see that they're making some progress, and the fact yes, that she is here and she's asking for a little yes, more time, I mean, I would say we revisit on June 7th. Appreciate that. Okay. That's uh, my recommendation, that we right. give her more time. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Didi. Yes. I'm just asking, how can we make a recommendation to extend it when she's not following the city rules? You didn't get a permit. Didn't get appraisal. Nothing. I mean, we I got. She, she has a permit. A permit. Yes. I thought you said you did have a permit. She has a permit. Don't have an inspection. Any inspection. Okay, I'm my fault. Okay. She's got a permit for thirty-two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, and then is the cost of repair above and beyond the appraised cost or not? Did Did you get that? Oh yeah. It is. Uh, yeah. So she got to bring the house back up to code. Yes. Okay. And in your opinion, the work she's doing is bringing it back up to code? I haven't seen enough progress. I haven't, I haven't seen anything. Okay. I haven't been um, called for any inspections to see if anything was done. They've hung the sheetrock on the ceiling, so I can't get up there and look at it. Yeah. You know, I can't see it. So. It just that one, one sheet, I think two sheet trucks, and that's it. And we stop them, but we're doing the, yes. the roofing because I don't want it to leak. I understand, you know, ma'am. You know, I understand, ma'am. I'm just, yes, you know. But you got a lot city, more to repair in there than you city, think. City government. All that needs to be taken out, all that rotten wood. City, city government has a protocol and rules to follow. Yes, sir. And, and I understand you got a permit, and, you know, we keep extending that deadline, but obviously, you're not doing what's required by the city from an inspection standpoint. So I just, you know, I, I hate to keep extending it and, and, and when you're violating the protocol of the city. I get it. I, I get it. I want to give you more time, but I don't Jesus. feel like I'm violating because I'm doing something. I'm not just sitting down watching and whining uh, or whatever excuse I But you I may use. be doing something yeah. without, out of code. Financially, I'll be honest with you, financially, I'm a single parent and I have no income from whatsoever. Yeah. You know, not a single down anywhere else. Right. And I have so, kids in college, kids okay, in high so school, and I, grandkids. Who I'm the, I, I have simply, I understand, ma'am. I really do. Everybody's facing hard times right now. I understand it. But do you think your finances are going to get any better in the next three months to get more done by oh, June? yes, definitely. In God's willing. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. I just want to make sure I heard right. Uh, I'm with Deed in terms of people coming show up and say they need more time. That's, that's honorable from what we've been dealing with over the last, well, personally for me, five, and those who've been here for two terms, five years. and then. But when Jimmy talked about the open wall, just so that we understand, Jimmy's talking about like open, you, you, and you, I want you to understand this because yes. I'm, I'm not a carpenter, I'm not, but I've, yes. Jimmy's inspected stuff that I did. You got open wall inspections, you got, that's right. you, you can't close a wall without him coming and look at it. We did not close no walls so far. Well, That's in other words, she's talking the ceiling. That's in the ceiling, not no, walls. So I don't want to play inspector. I'm just saying. I just yes. don't know if you understand. When he say you need to, when you complete a certain area, uh -huh. you need to get that area inspected <coughs> to see if you did it to code. Okay. You see, can't I just keep billing, 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 
and then he don't know what's behind the walls. <coughs> and he said, well, I can't see this. Okay. So you got to tear it down. So he's actually trying to save you money. Okay, I got you. He's trying I knew to save who, you honestly, money. Honestly, I don't know what yeah. you're supposed to call you, you him. I thought he didn't come on each other. Every time you do something of significance, yes. plumbing, you need an inspector. Electrical, you need another inspection. Yes, sir. Then you have to do an open wall <coughs> for everything. Okay. And then once you say, okay, you're good to do all your inside work and stuff, yes. then you can do that. Yeah, that's but when we do the inside. But you just keep billing, 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 you're spinning your wheels. Yes, sir. We're not doing anything on the inside. We just got the permit for the outside. That's what we've been doing, just but the outside. Still, I want to make sure no, no leak in there, you know, when it rains or nothing. When you retire, I got my man. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've been paying attention, too. I don't want to mess. I, you lose money like that. You actually lose money like that. And I learned something a long time ago because I had first got involved with my own grandparents' house that was on a demolition list. Mm -hmm. And I was doing stuff before talking to inspectors. And everything they did, and I want to put this out there. Yeah. They get mad at the inspectors, but yeah. everything they do is to protect us. And we think, are our tenants, are our whoever going to live in there? Yes. I understand that. Good point. Faulty wiring, mm -hmm. gas leaks. That's right. Backing up sewerage, yeah. roof caving in. This ain't just about your investment for your pockets. This is about, again, public health and safety. Yes, sir. Are you, which, are you, are you covering up something that could fall <coughs> on somebody renting from you from one hard rain and the inspector didn't look at it and he said, oh, yeah, that's good. And then all seven of us saw that rotten wood right there. Yes, That's what he's trying to make. And I, because, you know, I'm trying to make, make sure you understand that part. Let me see. That you need to let the inspector do his yes, job sir. to help you. I will have, I will call him and, you know, whenever they do anything, I will have him. I don't know who he's supposed to be. I thought he'd come anyway over right. there. You got a lot of work on that house, though. You got a oh, yeah, lot I know, of work on I know. It takes time. It takes money, and that's why. It takes money. It don't even take time. <laughs> it don't take time. It takes money. That homeless guy First, put me back he, years and years. Honestly, if you had the money, <laughs> he's on fire. you can he fix anything if you got the money. I mean, yes, they sir. fix Taj Mahal. They fix the leaning tower of pizza. They fix pizza. that cathedral. <laughs> that cathedral in France. They fix that, the one that was on fire. That burned down, lost everything. If you got the money, but if you don't have the money, money talks. then you're spinning everybody wheels. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, no, I'm being yeah, honest. Though, no, absolutely. As a matter of fact, my, my comment to her would be, you need to get a contractor who knows what the rules are. Yes, ma'am. So that the contractor, a contractor that's worth their salt would know that they need to get these inspections done. So you don't have to know that, but the person you hire needs to know that. It, it, <laughs> yes, ma'am. In all honesty, that needs to be a licensed contract. Mm -hmm. Because if it's not a licensed contract, then they're just going to take her money. Mm -hmm. So, no, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's so what's who, happening. Yeah. The guy that went to Morgan City, he took her money. Right. He so didn't what, do what he was supposed to do. Yeah, so what, you, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to hire somebody with a license so that, one, if somebody does try and get over on you, you got their license, you can probably go back and sue them. But, two, because they'll know to call... Uh, Jimmy to get the inspection yes, done sir. so that as you build this, you know, rebuild your house, renovate your house, it's going to come back to, it's going to be in great shape and you won't have to worry about all these other little issues that we're talking about tonight. Yes. So, I mean, I, I know sometimes it's easy to get these guys off the street that say they know how to do carpentry work, but you know what, you're going to be losing a lot of money I know that. and I you could have just hired one good contractor yes, and then that would have, you know, made this process a whole lot easier on you. You're right. I know. This, you, so you're going to have to show some substantial improvements between now and June 7th. Yes. Because we can't, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm on your side, and I want to make sure that you have time to fix your house. Yes. But, you know, after a period of time, I mean, I'm going to have to say, like everybody else, like, okay, this is not moving fast enough, and we got a health and safety issue. Yes. So help me help you by hiring the right person I will. so that you can get some good work done so that we don't have to worry about your house in the future and you'll be able to have a nice property that you can rent or live in yourself. Yes, ma'am. I'm okay. I will. One more thing. Dustin, I'm, Dustin, sorry, Dustin, Dustin, yeah. I'm sorry. Dustin had his hand up and then I think... They all, I mean, it, I can you don't mind. They all had made the point. My fear for you is that you're going to be in the hole big time because you're going to put all kind of money out I and you're know. not calling him for the proper inspection. You go spend all this money and not even get one inspection, he's yes, not going to bash you. And then you're really going to be in a bind. Yes, sir. Um, being, I, how is it fair? My, my 
my biggest argument is to a private guy that does construction work. How is it fair to him that he has to do all those same things? He has to call this man and come in because I would squirm sometime when Jimmy Landry's coming over to check it out because I've built the house and done other things. But we had to do that in order to go to the next step. <laughs> I'm not no no offense to you, Jimmy. You know, you know I love you, but I got rules. I got rules. Doing your job. I got. And I totally understand that. And I totally understand that. That's why I back you up. So, how is it fair to that private contractor? And it's not. Not fair. It's really not. So, I get what you're trying to do. It's just like we were just discussing. You're closing up walls already. You didn't even call to get an inspection. Maybe you probably don't know that's what you have to do, but it's all. I mean, we did not close it, the wall, period. Oh. The ceiling. The ceiling's coming. The ceiling's, yeah. you're, Just you're okay, sheet, you're, that too. I'm sorry, you're it's not close. I'm sorry, uh, you're attempting. Yes, So, sir. that's another. So, oh. I just, I don't know. I just, I know this is Didi's district. I get it. Um, another, one more question. Any, is anybody occupying the home? No, you see me, that homeless guy, but he left and he sold everything in there. Everything. He sold everything. So nobody's standing in at all? No, sir. No, it doesn't sir. have running water or power? No, 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 no. It doesn't have nothing. None of that. Okay. No, sir. All right. Well, that's, that's all the questions I have. You said about the homeless guy. That was the first guy that came in with right. you. Yeah. <laughs> but then there was a second guy that came that, that claimed he knew what to do and all, and he was going <coughs> to... He it left. Was, he got into it with his wife, and they both gone left the city. I okay. Where they went. Yeah, so he that's, wasn't living there, though. That's two people who um, you put some confidence in, um, oh, no. and they cost you a lot of money. So you you do get what you pay for. I oh, know. That is true. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> you need to pay somebody who knows what they're doing in order to get it right. If you really want to fix the house up, and... What are your plans for the house once it's fixed? Either sell it or rent it. It's just an investment for my kids, you know, and my granddaughter, you know, I'm raising. That's it, you know. My son, he's in the army right now. When he came back, I was hoping it'd be done, you know, so I can surprise him with it. So, Because well, from the pictures, it doesn't look like you have wiring in there either. No, no, we, we, we're not working on the inside. Thing. Once we start on the plumbing and the... Electricity, we, we, you know, we hire Mr. Jimmy Landry and we hire electrician, you know, licensed electrician, licensed plumber, we'll do all of that. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. Uh, you have your hand up and Mr. Broussard is his hand up. Uh, Didi. Oh, well, he's going to I get, get under the bus all the we time. Never, <laughs> we never, we never, ever hardly go against the back. city council person in that district to do it. I made a stern motion on mine before this now I'm leaning against just take it down but on your idea of you wanted to go to June but I mean in June we got to look at this thing real hard a lot of us are talking about taking it down now you better find somebody I that's going to make a big difference time. in this thing mm -hmm. Didi we're backing you up till June but in June I don't know if we can go another round like we've been doing with the, with the other round. No, I mean, Gosh. in June, if, if there's no progress. And we're all trying to follow what you want to do. Yeah. In your district, which we're going to go with. I'm going to go with One you. One time. No back and Tonight. Forth. I'm going to go with you tonight. <coughs> but, boy, in June, it's going to be hard for all of us, you know. It's going to be hard for me, too. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I mean, I, so I'm giving her until June. but we're doing I, is it better be a drastic change. got to see some, some a lot of changes you know, by it, June. Because if not, then I can't even go with it. And it could so. be worse tonight when we make a second motion. To take it down tonight, we don't want to go against our city pers council person. We've never done that. We always go by what the city council person wants to do in their district. We try, but three and four times that's getting rough coming back at us, you know. I agree with these things, you know. But I think in June, if nothing's really done big time, uh, we got to just but we going with I'm going with you, DD, because it's I your district that. and that's what you feel. But I went enough times on the one before. I think enough times on this one. Okay. We'll be about that time in June. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? You want to let me know? Yes, sir. Okay. So, Didi, I, I respect you, Judge. But, Jimmy, is this yes or no? Is uh, name, Mrs. Asma. Asma. Mrs. Asma. 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 Yes, sir. Is she in clear violation of the city rules of what she's doing to her house currently? Well, the sheetrock's going to have to come down. No, no, I mean by not allowing inspection. 
Yes do, no. no, she hadn't done enough work to get an That's inspection. Right. Yeah, she ain't in a okay. So she didn't she violate, violate any city rules. She didn't do enough to violate it. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> right? Right. She hadn't done enough work to even look at an inspection. Right. Okay. All right. So, all right. That's my question. Okay. Is there any other discussion? Yes, sir. So hanging she right before? Is the only one she is what she's okay. saying. All right. So it's, I remember that. I, I can only see what was from the back door that was As a matter of fact, he put the wrong sheet. That's supposed to be a bathroom sheet. So. Yeah. Yeah. The guy was trying to show water me he does some some water yeah. yeah. You know what he was doing. And I told him to take it off because that's for the bathroom and the, you know, the <laughs> No, I just look if, if, I'm sorry, Rick. I if, didn't realize you had the floor. If in June you come back and, and you got side shaken by a con by somebody on the side and you get broken and money wise or whatever and you still don't have no finances. We didn't protect the public, Didi, I promise you. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> listen, once again, I just told her oh, if she no, doesn't have substantial work done by June 7th, <laughs> I'm going to lead the pack and saying we yeah. have to take it and down. I'm, I then. want, she's here, she's interested, she's trying to do something, and my job is to help her get there. So I want to help her as much as I can. But. Come June, then you know. All right. I'm gonna say, just like everybody else, there's not enough, and we need to protect the public now. Instead of just waiting on you guys to get this work done, I'll have to go with protecting the public. Yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. But I, I really, I encourage you to find a licensed contractor. If oh, you wait. don't have one, I have one that I can give you his name and number. So that, that you can call nice. them, have them come out there and give you an estimate, and you might potentially be able to work with them. Okay. But uh, it's some, it, and I get it. Some of these guys, you know, they they say they can do all this work, but I can tell you just from the work I do with the USDA and people who get contractors that you know with the um, the grant, it's up to seventy five hundred. They don't have to use a licensed person, and there's quite a few of them that are sorry yep. that they get at Tom, Dick, and Harry to do the work. Mm -hmm. Because the work is, doesn't have a warranty, <coughs> and then they're stuck. They can't get the grant again. So I caution you to, to, to leave those guys alone and go she get knows. you a licensed contractor. Definitely, yes, ma'am. Didi, she, she got burned on the house next door. Uh, no. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Didi, I'm going to take in your motion because you're took, showing some and compassion, and, one, and I think you're doing the right thing. But took don't watch me in June. That's funny. I'll we got the table until you're not here. <laughs> so I have a first and a second. Is there any other discussion? I was going to chime in real quick. Yeah, Might good. As well. Come on. Uh, what's the Join easiest, the party. What's the easiest way for her to find out if a contractor's licensed online? State, uh, state contractors. State board. contractors board for you can look online. And okay. list you can ask for a copy of it. Yeah, she can okay. ask for a copy. Then they of come it, out but there. You can go online. Best and see. option that way you can call, Very get easy. some quotes, and you know that they're licensed mm -hmm. because I mean like you're Mr. just spinning your before, wheels here. A guy, I gave him every penny I have. And he ended up, he ended up in jail, but I, what I got, yeah. nothing. No, unlike yeah. if somebody else sued him. Yeah, uh, and he was licensed that guy, and I gave yes. him everything. You, you can ask them for a copy of their license and a yep. copy of their insurance. Yep. 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 Yeah, because they have to have insurance. You want them to have workman's comp and all yes. of that. If you don't mind, write me his name. I sure I will. Yes, ma'am. Okay. That. Yeah, because that contractor will do everything for you, like as far as the paperwork, mm -hmm. like in dealing with the city, yeah. you know, like everyone yeah. else daughter, said. You know, she had one cousin of her husband. Okay, gotcha. And I can see both of them, you know. Okay. okay. You know, yes, ma'am. That's it. That's all I had. Thank Mr. You. Bruce, said it's going to be okay. It's okay. You'll get beat by a licensed contractor too if you're not careful. <laughs> Less likely. He was looking at you. I wonder if he's talking about uh, Yeah, I'm like, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a first and second. We've had a really good discussion. Everybody's finished? Uh, then please uh, vote your machines. Cool. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Esme. Thank you. We'll see you June 7th. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Councilman's remarks, and tonight, uh, I guess I'll start. I don't know where I started last time. I really don't remember. Well, you started with me last time. So. Okay. Uh, Councilman Marcotte. Okay. I'll go ahead and make one last push for Evangeline Little League. Uh, good, tryouts good. are this weekend. Uh, you can still sign up, though, online. Go to their Facebook page. They have their website there. Uh, sign up ends Sunday. So Saturday and Sunday are tryouts. So go ahead and sign up those kids so we can have a, a great competitive league. Thank you. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yes, oh.
Yeah, look, look like every week I'm uh, giving condolences or something to somebody's family. Uh, but, you know, that's life, and uh, we just have to keep on pushing and praying. Um, I think last week we lost a um, Star Wars soldier in our community, Miss Eva. Miss Eva uh, Fusilier Landry Lewis. Uh, she, she was a leader in our community, a uh, civil rights advocate, a uh, human rights advocate, a uh, prayer warrior. Uh, she went home, and I think her service is going to be tomorrow, Friday, uh, tomorrow, Thursday. I think it's from five to nine at uh, Bolden Funeral yes. Home, and then uh, Friday morning at eleven o'clock at uh, Lighthouse uh, Lighthouse Baptist on Center Street. So, uh, you know, if you know the family, reach out to the family of, of Miss Eva. Uh, that's all I have for right now. Thank you. I wish to report to the City Council on recent federal infrastructure funding that is available to counties and parishes. If ever there was a time for a team effort to come together for getting a government grant for funding our railroad overpass, the time has come. There are two booklets. Mr. Mayor here. All right, thank you. From uh, two booklets, I, read, I gave you there are two booklets that pertain to the infrastructure funding are dated February 22nd. They have a whole line of uh, these uh, number one NACO legislative analysis, the bipartisan infrastructure, all in this book, PL 11758. And I'll name another one, the third, they say the third line NACO supplement bipartisan infrastructure law analysis breakdown of federal infrastructure funding available for counties and parishes. Number five is the same thing, but it's all related to that book. Our Barry Parish Council, Mr. Eugene Olivier Sr., District 10, is heading up one of the grants to send to Washington, D.C. He just got back. That's where he got this book, Mr. Mayor, and that's where he got this idea. The purpose of one of the grants is funding federal funds for building a railroad overpass in your area. I am requesting that anyone who is available, who is able and available to provide any additional information, please contact Mr. Eugene Olivier. Maybe you have a few people that did other grants. You have some knowledge, Mr. Mayor. Please touch base. We have one shot, and maybe we'll get some funds, but please have them touch base with Eugene Olivier so we can make a nice grant to send to the federal government. Efforts by Mr. Olivier under the leadership of Iberia Parish President Richard represents a giant leap towards in helping us realize our goal of getting a railroad overpass built in Yardbury. Getting a railroad overpass in Yardbury, Louisiana has been elusive, elusive. I first started working to get a railroad overpass built in Yardbury, Louisiana more than 25 years ago. I have never given up. I am more determined than ever to get the railroad overpass built. But this is the first time, Mr. Mayor, that we're asking maybe for a grant. It's a long shot. But darn it, if they want to wake up and send us our Barry Parish some money, let's get it. Heck on some other states and parishes. Let's get it for our Barry Parish. It will be difficult to get our overpass built without the combined efforts of the team. This grant for our railroad overpass will improve safety, not only for all citizens of our Barry Parish, but also the state of Louisiana and others. I am requesting our Mayor D. Court to be part of the team consisting all our council here to be a part of a team for the city of Niberia, the Iberia Parish, state of Louisiana, and the United States Louisiana Senators. Mr. Mayor, you have the book. If you have some grant people that can help us, put some words together and uh, help us on a grant. We can help, but no, just trying to get monies from the federal government. If we get it, fine. If not, we tried. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Not a problem. Build back better. Build yep. back better. Well, you know, you I hope I appreciate that uh, the parish is working as a big team. Yes, sir. In reaching out their arms and say we have this grant. It's in the grant thing that we have for funding for railroads and, and roads. Mm -hmm. Well, that, they had the idea to reach out to me to let's get this going. So please, Mr. Mayor, please contact and make sure that we have a good grant going. Right. Yes, sir. Thank you. Member Tim. Yes, sir. 
Yeah, so just um, briefly, I just want to commend the mayor, and, and, and Aaron doesn't get enough credit because I, I, we were able to attend the LMA conference uh, a couple weeks ago, and it just showed me how intriguing the amount of work that goes into planning this Harper money and the plan that we got. And talking to a few other council uh, personnel that we, we really have an A-game plan, and I want to commend you guys for doing that, and I look forward to working with you. But uh, th these, these two right here are on top of the Harper money, and uh, I'm very proud of what they're doing. Yes, ma'am. On March the 17th, I'm going to start back uh, having neighborhood watch for District 4. <clears throat> it will be at 6 o'clock p.m. Uh, at the Sliman. So um, all members in District 4 and others who uh, want to attend, please come out, and we'll be happy to have you. See you there. Thank you. Um, like uh, Councilman Lewis, I'd also like to send my condolences to the Lewis Landry family. Um, those are my lifelong friends, and Ms. Evo is a great lady, and she will be missed, mm -hmm. very much so. Um, also, I'd like to say thank you to Councilwoman Ledbetter yeah. and the NAACP for nice. giving me an award last weekend, um, an achievement award. It was surprise and it was awesome and thank you very much for recognizing the work but um, as I stated before we're just beginning so we got a lot more work to do and then lastly um, the downtown neighborhood association would normally meet tonight but since we switched our meetings to tonight we're gonna meet December I'm um, December <laughs> March 9th <laughs> at 6 o'clock p.m. at uh, the Masonic uh, on Ann Street and so we hope that the public will come out. Um, you know, we, we're ready to kind of get started with doing some other projects, um, and we're looking for other people to join us. So thank you. Thank you. Dustin. Thank you. Uh, as usual, Festival of Live Oaks, March 19th. Um, this could be a fun day. We're trying to get as many teams as we can. I think we might be a little shorthanded this year, but we had a few teams had to drop out for some other reason. But, uh, Let's try and be supportive of this event. We have lots of arts and crafts vendors and and things for the kids, and we're still gonna have the junior cook-off, which is gonna be cranked up again this year. So let's uh, let's do our part and try to get out there and be supportive of everyone. Um, also, I don't really talk much about world politics and all this here, but tonight I want to pray for the people of Ukraine. Of course, I mean, I hope we're all paying attention to what's going on because a lot of things are shaking up and. I just hope and pray these people can overcome uh, what's been dealt to them. So that's it for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a few. My condolences to Miss Eva Lewis's family. She was uh, really good to me uh, over my many years in politics as a pro tem, and then as my five years as mayor. I would see her at every community function. Uh, she saved my butt a couple of times that people were getting on me, and she'd stand up and say, you know. Get off that little mare. Uh, she was pretty funny, but great lady. Just a really community-driven person her whole life. And, I mean, I didn't know her as well until I got into politics, but you saw her everywhere, you know, just really a pillar of our community. So, uh, you know, condolences to her family, and uh, what a life well lived. Um, we have a redistricting meeting. That's going to be March 29th. It's at 1.30 in the afternoon. Everybody's confirmed. Uh, we'll have our uh, camera people here as well. It's, a, it's basically a special meeting so that we can work on our redistricting with full transparency. I'm really looking forward to that. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Our next meeting is March 15th. Uh, please look at the stuff and ask our council and our citizens to participate in the MS4 stormwater survey that's on our city website. We had a meeting about that today. We have so many hurdles to jump every year that we have to meet, and that is actually one of them. Um, we still have property for sale on Civic Source. I'll try not to butcher this. Slava Ukraine Ani, which is glory to Ukraine. Whoa, that's got to be the most badass people. Anyway, uh, I just want to say that we keep them in our prayers, and I am, you know, uh, so certainly what's we hope. What's the response? Glory to the heroes. That's it. That's it. Glory to the heroes. So that's, that's it. Uh, I ask for a motion to adjourn. Motion. motion. Thank you.